Hi, we will start with our first example. Here we have a list of 10 customer IDs written in B4 till B13. We have a list of corresponding customer names, the segment as well as the sales amount. Now our requirement here is to search for the sales amount for these three customers, Darren, Anthony and Toby. Now before we write the function, let us for a moment try to understand how we would have done this manually. For example, if you were searching for Darren, Darren would have been our lookup value, that's the name that we are searching for. The region where we are searching is a list of all the customer names and the result would have been in the third column, which is the sales column and the number is 902. Similarly, if we were searching for Toby, this time Toby becomes our lookup value and then the record is the last one in our data set and the result would be again in the third column which would be 147. Now this exactly is what we are trying to replicate in the VLOOKUP function as well. Also if you notice carefully in this entire process we never selected the first column which is customer ID and there's a very important reason for this. The VLOOKUP function expects that the lookup value has to be in the first column of our data set, which means that if we had selected the customer ID as the first column, then we would have got an error. For example, if I try to search for Darren, in the first column, I'm sure all of you would agree that this makes no sense because the Darren name is not available in the first column at all. It is available in the second column. Let's start writing the function now. So we write equal to VLOOKUP and the moment you start writing equal to VL, you notice the explanation very clearly tells you that it looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table. Remember, Darren Powers is a customer name. That means the table that we select needs to start on column C, not on column B. So we say equal to VLOOKUP. Now there are four arguments that we have the lookup value, the table array, the column index number, and the range lookup. So we'll go through them one by one. The first one says the lookup value, which is very simple. That's the name that we seek, which is Darren Powers written in G4. The moment I put a comma, it asks me for the next argument, which is the table array, which remember is not going to start at column B. It is going to start at column C. Now, our result is not in column C, it is in column E. And that's the reason my table will contain three different columns, C, D, and E. I put another comma. Now it asks us for the column index number. Now a lot of us uh, make a mistake in the, big, in the beginning saying that E is the fifth column and we try to put a number five. But remember, it is not asking you for the column number. It is asking you for the column index number. That means that because our red area that we have selected, that is the table array, only has three columns in it. C is column number one, D is column number two, and E is column number three. So we put three as the column number. And then our final argument is going to ask us, do we want a true or a false? A true is an approximate match and a false is an exact match. Now think of it this way. Imagine there were two Darrens in the organization. And one of them was a Darren Powers, the other one was a Darren Jacobs. Now, approximately, in a way, you would say that both the names are similar because the first name is matching. But that's not really what we want, right? If you're searching for a specific name or for a specific ID or for a specific number, we want precisely the same result to be found. That means that I don't want a result that is close to my lookup value, but exactly my lookup value. So I'm going to choose false as the last argument. Now in the lectures that we cover after this, I will be taking some examples of a true approximate match as well. But with my experience of 20 years, I can tell you that 99 out of 100 cases, you want to use an exact match. It's very, very rare that you would want to use a true match. The true match also has its own significance, but we will cover that later. Now, if you notice, we 
get the result 902 so darren powers is 902 and how is this working g4 is our lookup value c3 e13 is my table array my result is in column 3 and the type of match is an exact match which is false but the moment i try to copy this formula down you notice that the results are coming so we are getting 799 and 147 but there's a very common mistake that can happen if you just copy and paste the formulas like this so please watch despite the fact that we are getting the right result there is a mistake that we have made which we have not realized you notice that in anthony jacobs we are not actually searching from c3 to e13 we are searching from c4 to e14 that means that our table array has also got shifted one row down also if i look at toby you notice the same error happens my entire red area which is my table array is shifting one row down now you might be wondering but what's the big deal why can't we you know just not bother and write the formula the way we have written it so let me show it to you this way imagine that we were searching for fill in up and as a matter of fact i'll just add one more record and i'll make this one make brown and i'll make the last one fill in up now do you see this despite the fact that fill in up is a part of our data set it is not giving us a result it is giving us an error now think about why this problem is occurring the reason is that we are not searching for fill in in c3 to e13 we are searching from c6 to e16 that's clearly wrong right because our red table array selection should not change in every single formula how do we fix this we have to make sure that c3 to e13 is mentioned inside dollar signs now you can either put these dollars manually or you can press f4 the function key to put the dollars in one click and now if you notice all the results come correctly and if you notice carefully in every single formula the table array is constant so c3 and e13 is not shifting so that was our first absolutely basic vlookup formula in the forthcoming lectures we'll look at some more advanced examples but for this lecture as well as for the ones that we are covering later i will implore you to please practice all of these things even if some of these topics you are comfortable with there is no harm in revising because it's very important to get the fundamentals right before you jump onto the more difficult topics i will see you for the next lecture